Hey everyone, uh, I watched the next VR Troopers episode, Ghost Biker, and I was kind of not looking forward to these uh, post-Defending Darkheart episodes, because I was thinking, you know, on the one hand, we're getting back to standard episodes, and that's cool, but on the other hand, are, are they going to be kind of lame like the earlier episodes? But actually, this one was pretty good. I really like this one. It's not... One of the better VR Trooper episodes, there's definitely some problems with it. Percy's, like, stupider than ever. Like, wow, he is really degraded since he was introduced. Which is really saying something, because he was never really treated all that well to begin with. So anyway, this episode... Oh yeah, the beginning of this episode is really strange. It starts off with Woody and the Troopers are at this uh, bike mechanics place. And that's not too weird. Uh, the whole reason they're there is because the mechanic tells them a story about a ghost biker that appears somewhere, and Woody wants to do a story on this ghost biker story. Um, the weird thing here is the way it's shot. Whoever the director was for this scene apparently had just watched Adam West Batman, and, like, the weird tilted camera angles that slowly turn, and, like, do... And then there's, like, just like, weird zoom, zoom out, and the camera spins around, and all this weird stuff. They must have saw that and thought, that would work for the opening scene of VR Troopers, but not the rest of it. Leave the rest of it the way it is, like the way we normally do things. It's very jarring and strange to have the beginning be all surreal, like the camera going for no real reason. Also, there's a smoky mist over everything which gives it kind of a mysterious feel. And then it all abruptly cuts to just standard, everything's just straight, shot normal. No weird camera to anything. I don't know why that was necessary for... I don't know, I guess VR Trooper is like, if you're going to experiment with things, like, it, it might as well be VR Troopers, a show that, like, isn't going to be heavily scrutinized by a lot of people, except weirdo nerds like me, I guess. So, uh, let's see. Da, da, da. Carl Zichter orders one of his minions to investigate a break in the reality barrier. Then he goes to virtual reality, and uh, Ivar and Icebot confirm the break, and Grimlord is hoping that the break will grow, or he can send troops to, like, widen it himself so that he can send more through the reality barrier to Earth. Which... In Defending Dark Art, didn't he, like, have plenty of monsters going through the reality barrier? Why isn't he... What stops him from, like, just using one? So then, uh, after all that, we go to the newspaper and we get to see what Percy's up to. Percy has gotten really dumb to the point where he doesn't remember how his own camera works. Wasn't the whole reason he was, like, brought on was because he was a photographer? I mean, part of it was, yeah, nepotism, but also, like, yeah, he was a photographer. And presumably he had some talent. I mean, I don't know where this, like, we hate Percy attitude has come from, but yeah, we hate Percy now. He can't do anything right. He doesn't know how to use his camera. And then he sits in nachos, which also uh, gives us... The only appearance Jeb gets in this episode, which is really strange. I don't know why Jeb isn't in this episode more. The only scene he's in is stock footage in this scene. Let's see, Percy uh, falls back and sits in a plate of nachos. Then it cuts to Jeb looking really surprised, and there's that little animation of his eyes uh, bugging out. And that's it for... That's it for, for Jeb. I don't know, I guess maybe he was busy that day, or maybe he had a vet appointment. <laughs> So anyway, um, da, 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 da. Caitlin goes to uh, get photos of the alleged ghost biker. She goes and asks uh, Ryan and JB to accompany her. Uh, Ryan's busy with a karate class, so JB goes with her, and they immediately see this weird person on a motorcycle surrounded by glowing sparks. And then Percy shows up. I guess he followed Caitlin? Is that going to be a, a thing with him now, that he follows Caitlyn around? Like, Caitlyn goes to do something and he has to follow her? I don't think they thought through the implications there very well. Anyway, the... Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. Okay. The biker stops in front of Caitlyn and vanishes. Then over in virtual reality, Grimlord detects them, and uh, they're near where the... 
And my notes spelled near wrong. Eh, come on. So anyway, the Ghost Viker disappears, and Grimlord sends some scugs. And it's really becoming obvious to me that Grimlord is really stupid not to realize at this point that sending scugs is not a deterrent. All it does is make it clear that he's planning something, or there's something big going on with him, and it alerts the troopers to whatever he's doing. Ah, whatever, he keeps doing it. So anyway, uh, they defeat... Uh, let's see, they defeat the Skugs, and then the Ghost Biker reappears, and then zaps JB and Caitlyn with, with a beam or something, and then they teleport away. Then Percy pops up, hiding from his hiding spot behind some junk or something. He walks around, he's like, huh, where'd they go? Then he sees Caitlyn's camera. Huh, Caitlyn's camera? Why would she leave this behind? And then he tries to turn in the photos himself, but Woody recognizes them as Caitlyn's because he knows how... Uh, he can recognize a photographer's work, and we see the pictures, they're all, like, blurry, kind of brown and white. They're not very good pictures, whatever. I think it would have been a little better if Woody's explanation was, I recognize Caitlyn's camera. Like, she has a different camera than Percy does, so it makes sense that the pictures would have some kind of difference like that, and that would make more sense than Caitlyn takes pictures a different way than Percy. I mean, she's just standing there snapping pictures. There's not really any method or anything to it. So, anyway, Ryan shows up and asks Percy if he knows where JB and Caitlin are. He tells Ryan he doesn't know, only that there was a biker with a weird glow right before they disappeared. Ryan finds a spot where JB and Caitlin disappeared, and, oh, I, f I forgot about this. He takes out the little virtual communicator thing, and I couldn't remember what the name of it was, so I didn't write it in my notes. What was the name of that thing? Because now I can't remember. Whatever, anyway, it's not that important. Professor Hart tells Ryan that the reality barrier is thin here. And then, uh, in virtual reality, Renegade, one of Grimlord's henchmen, is trying to widen the uh, reality barrier. Two other monsters uh, work with him, and, uh, oh yeah, they see the ghost biker go by, and they try to attack him. Professor Hart tells Ryan about this and tells him, You have to defend the biker. He might know something about JB and Caitlin. So then Grimlord's monsters turn their attention to Ryan, and then we see JB and Caitlin in this other dimension with the Ghost Biker. It's a weird, smoky void with some glowing lights emanating from somewhere. They try to talk to the Ghost Biker, but he just disappears. And then later on, uh, we see him again with JB and Caitlin, and this time he does explain that he's a computer-programmed guardian between dimensions. Okay. Why is he a biker then how is he physical if he's a computer program i know it's vr troopers and it's probably all just techno babble that they didn't really know the meaning of or have any intention of explaining but i don't know it's really weird it seems like there were better ways to explain him away than he's a computer program so then let's see later on we get a little explanation from him that oh wait did i skip something Okay, I guess not. Anyway, we get some explanation later from him that the reason why he's keeping JB and Caitlin in this other dimension is because he thinks they're in danger. And then Grimlord orders Ivar to take over breaking through the reality barrier. The biker shows up to help Ryan defeat Renegade, shooting away Renegade's weapon, which Renegade gets right back anyway. Well, that was useful. So then Ryan continues to battle Renegade, but the biker shows up occasionally to assist him, and then Ryan defeats uh, Renegade finally, and then he finds a dimensional gateway to Virtual Limbo, which it turns out is the dimension JB and Caitlin are in. Uh, the ghost biker takes Ryan into Virtual Limbo, and uh, they reunite with JB and Caitlin. Ryan asks the, ver the ghost biker who created him, was it his father? But then they're teleported away, and they never get an answer, and Ivar is just kind of forgotten about, I guess. He didn't really accomplish anything. So then at the left, they all meet up at the newspaper. Percy found, or yeah, Percy found an antique camera in the attic of uh, the newspaper place in storage. He tries to take a picture with, with it, and then everything blows up in his face. The end, laugh, ha ha ha. This is an okay episode. 
Like, I, I liked it just fine. I like the ghost biker idea. It's a cool concept. It's an interesting character. I get the feeling he's probably not going to show up often. The suit was easy to recreate since it's just a motorcycle helmet, a jacket, and he's on a motorcycle. So it's pretty simple to recreate that. It'd be nice if, like, the things that they create for VR Troopers were utilized more. I think, yeah, I don't think he ever comes back. I was looking up reference pictures of him, and they're only from this episode, and they're really blurry on top of that. So, uh... I don't really know what else to say about this one. It's a pretty, like, basic... There is one interesting thing that, like, the uh, monster of the week isn't really a monster. It's more the ghost biker. Renegade is kind of there, but, I don't know, he's not really that important. I think he's just there because he was there in the Japanese footage with the ghost biker, or whoever the biker was, who I think was, like, just a guy. He wasn't really, like, had superpowers or anything. Oh, that's something. The sparkle effect that they put around the biker, sometimes it's there and sometimes it isn't. And I don't know what that's all about. Was it too hard to include that in the American version? Um, hmm. I'm trying to think of more stuff to say about this episode. I can't really think of a whole lot. Yeah, there's not much to this one. It's a pretty simple, straightforward episode. It's got some cool stuff. It's... Um... Hmm. I don't know what to say, so I guess I'll end it here. Hope you enjoyed this. See ya.